Hey everyone, my name is Luke and welcome to my channel. As you can probably see just behind me, I've got both rigs out tonight and I'm working on two separate targets, or rather I'm working on one and Chloe is working on finishing off the other and I'll tell you about those in just a moment. Now it's been forecast to be cleared a few times this week but unfortunately due to a massive cloud of Saharan dust that's been over the UK recently, it has been anything but. If I just put a few photographs on the screen for you now that I just took with my phone, uh, I couldn't really believe what I was seeing. You could, you could see that it should have been a clear night but there's so much dust in the air it was showing up all the light pollution and uh, you could barely see even a star or two just visually it was almost like it was clouded out really bad stuff but fortunately tonight it seems to have largely moved on it's not perfect but i'll take where i can get at this point Now back to the targets. As I mentioned, me and Chloe are shooting two completely different targets tonight. So over here on the Esprit 120, Chloe's just recently changed her camera. So now she's shooting with a 183mm Pro, whereas previously she was using a 1600mm. Both are fantastic cameras, but that 183 has slightly smaller pixels. So it means she's gonna be sampling the night sky that much finer, which is a great thing really for galaxy season when you want all the resolution that you can get. Now she's shooting M106 and a few of the nearby neighboring galaxies and it's all of course being done in mono with the astronomic RGB plus L filters and that's looking great. She's almost got about 15 hours of data on this target. However, over here with the 300 PDS, I'm shooting a totally different target. I'm shooting M63, one of my absolute favorites. I just recently shot it using Chloe's old camera and some LRGB filters. Uh, there was given by a great friend of mine, Bill Blanchon, along with some other stuff, which I'll have to introduce all that to you soon. But basically tonight I've gone for a different approach. I'm going to kind of back to basics. Uh, I've got the one shot color camera on the 2600 MC Pro. I am off axis guiding because of this mega long focal length uh, and I'm just using long exposures and just seeing where I can get in one night. Just trying to have some fun rather than always testing things out. Well that's everything just about introduced I think and I think I'm going to head off inside now and just keep an eye on things from in there. Uh, we've got both the ASI Air running just on this so we can monitor things indoors and I'm running the mini pc with nina on 300 pds so that's going to be just fantastic for one of those really kind of relaxed sessions which i sometimes i'll be honest with you i'm quite lazy i sometimes like those types of sessions <laughs> Alright guys, so we're a few hours on from when last we spoke and I'm happy to report that largely things have been going off without a hitch, which is great news in anybody's book. Um, it looks like the conditions may be improved ever so slightly from the start of the night and I've basically been keeping an eye on that, mainly with time lapses that I've been taking to help stitch this video together. Um, they're quite useful of course because you can turn almost an hour of real time and the amount of weather changes that happen in that time into just a 15 second chunk in my case which uh, really lets you see what's happening kind of at a glance and on the note of keeping uh, an eye on things at a glance i've found also nina to be really quite interesting when it comes to that so this main window of imaging uh, has been a bit of a godsend tonight i've been able to keep an eye on things basically completely from this one window i'm not flicking back and forth between things I can see everything here. So the, the previous images, the current image, uh, the star quality and amount. So I can see how things are changing through the night. I can see previous autofocus results and just see how well it focused. The image histogram, interestingly enough, the guider is also there at the bottom. So that's uh, PhD's graph. So I'm not having to kind of flick um, back and forth between the PhD window and uh, the main imaging software or anything like that it kind of just does it all itself and um, anybody who knows me uh, or has maybe watched my content for a while i say it often enough but um, 
I really do value ease of use and simplicity and that's why I was really such a fan of the ASI Air Plus which is running over here. That's just been absolutely faultless tonight by the way. I haven't had to do really a single thing with that. Just kind of keep one eye on it and restart the imaging plan when it had finished. Um, totally painless, massive fan of that system. But also I, I really do want to point out the fact that Nina tonight has also been completely, completely painless. Well guys, it's about half past three in the morning. I thought I'd wrap things up as we entered this last half an hour or so probably of shooting. So some totals for you. Let's get into the kind of meat and potatoes of this. I will have taken by the time dawn breaks in about half an hour, seven hours on M63 with the 300 PDS. So I'm hoping that that should make a nice image. I'm certainly looking forward to processing that one. Should be interesting to see how it turns out. Chloe, however, on the Spree rig just there with the 183 mono and uh, LRGB, she has taken, well, 500 LRGB shots uh, so far. So she's going to get a few more as well before dawn breaks. But that's a phenomenal amount of data at two minute shots. And uh, I'm really looking forward to processing it. Not so much looking forward to stacking it. I think it's going to grind my PC to an absolute halt. Uh, almost no doubt about that one. Um, some cool news I just got from my friend James, for those of you who watched the video a few weeks back where I did an interview with him, uh, North meets South, interview with an Aussie astronomer kind of thing, um, that was a lot of fun and thank you very much again James for coming all this way to come see me as part of your trip, but basically he's home safe now and uh, he sent some pictures to me that I just really want to share with you guys, they're absolutely phenomenal, so I'll put those on the screen right now and you can see those uh, shots of the aurora borealis all the way from finland he took those um absolutely staggering and probably about to put to shame what i'm going to show at the end of this video but all the same i just have to share them um and i think that's probably just about everything that i've got for you tonight guys so uh as always i'd just like to finish by saying thank you so so much for watching and i do genuinely mean it i hope that it comes across um I can't thank you enough for all that you do for me and all the support that you guys show. So uh, genuinely, my heart goes out to you. Thank you so much. And um, I hope that you've enjoyed the video and I hope that you'll enjoy the images I'm going to show at the end. No doubt there's many hours of processing to bring something to you uh, that I'm happy to share. So I think with that said, that's about everything now. It looks like there's some clouds coming in. Oh no. <laughs> but anyway, until next time guys, I hope you enjoyed and clear skies.